All right, solids recovery for a belt press. So when you have a belt press, you're, sending, you're uh, putting um, coagulated sludge onto a belt, squeezing it um, with two belts that go between rollers, and then a discharge in a cake. And now when you squeeze those solids, part of the solids are squeezed from in between the belt and into what's called the filtrate, which is um, the water that you're squeezing out. So you can almost never get 100% solids recovery. You're going to lose some that uh, are putting onto the belt. So what they want to know is, what was the percent efficiency of this belt? How many solids did we recover from the system? So I put this much into it, I got this much out, how efficient was I? And a percent efficiency for a belt press is the end product divided by the fed product <coughs> times 100. So we need to find out how many total pounds we fed and then how many total pounds we got out of it. So let's go ahead and start out by doing that. So remember, whenever you're doing pounds, you need MGD. So this is gallons per minute. So 70 gallons per minute times 60 minutes in an hour will give you how many gallons per hour, and then it's run for eight hours. So that's going to give you the total gallons for that run time for that day. So 70 times 60 times 8 gives you 33,600 gallons per day. All right. Now the feed sludge is 3.9% total solids. So before I even coagulated it, I took a sample of it to find out how much uh, of it was total solids. And it's 3.9%. And as you remember, 1% is 10,000 milligrams per liter. So 3.9% times 10,000 milligrams per liter per percent gives me a concentration of 39,000 milligrams per liter. So my feed sludge is 39,000 milligrams per liter. So uh, I already converted it from gallons per day to MGD. Um, I failed to write that in there, but this is MGD right here. 0 0.0336 MGD times 8.34 times 39,000 milligrams per liter equals 10,929 pounds fed. So, and this this number right here is assuming that the cake is 100% dry. So if I were to spread this cake out and let it bake in the sun or run it into an, incinerator, or a, um, an oven of some sort and got all the water out, I would have 10,929 pounds fed for this whole day. 100% dry. But what we produced was 28 wet tons. It's not dry yet. You can almost never get a belt press 100% dry without having some sort of oven attached to it. So we figured out how much we fed. We've got the bottom part. Now we need to find the end part. So I produced 28 wet tons and it's 18% solids. So that means uh, it's 82% um, it's 82% wet. There's 82% of the, of the solids that you produce today is water. And so let's figure out how many pounds we produced, how many wet pounds we produced first. So 28 wet tons times 2,000 pounds per ton, there's 2,000 pounds in a ton, gives me 56,000 wet pounds. So if I were to lay all, if I put this um, on a scale, it would weigh 56,000 pounds. And it's 18% solids. So what we need to also assume is that this is 100% dry. If you assume this is 100% dry, you need to also assume that this is 100% dry. So go ahead and multiply 56,000 times 0.18. 18% is 0.18. And that should give you the dry pounds. 10,080 dry pounds. So you can see we lost you know, almost, nine, uh, almost 900 pounds of sludge in the filtrate between 10,929 and 10,080. So we have the end product and we have the fed product. Let's plug them into this formula and figure it out. So 10,080 dry pounds divided by 10,929 dry pounds fed times 100 gives you a efficiency of 92.2%. So you're losing about 8% uh, solids in the filtrate which is okay. Um, 
you want to try and minimize as much of it as you can because your filtrate uh, usually goes back to the headworks and will increase your influent TSS, which is um, not a huge problem unless you unless you have a problem removing TSS. Um, but generally, you want to get out as much as you can. Um, so you want to you want to make sure you get out as much of the water as you can without squeezing out solids. And that's solids recovery for a bell press. All right, last problem, pump efficiency. So we got an eight horsepower pump. It's pumping four MGD against 10 feet of head. So it's pushing this water up 10 feet from where it already is. And they wanna know how efficient is this pump right now? So there's two formulas. Uh, to find the horsepower, you need gallons per minute times the head in feet divided by 3960, and that'll give you horsepower. And then, since it's an efficiency problem, you need to find the output, divide it by what it's supposed to be. So it's an eight horsepower pump, but what is it putting out? And then multiply it by 100. So let's find out the horse, what, this horse, what this pump is actually putting out. You know it's an eight horsepower pump, but is it actually performing at eight horsepower? So 4 MGD times 694 gallons per minute per MGD, remember we need gallons per minute, gives you 2776 gallons per minute, times 10 feet divided by 3960 will give you 7 horsepower. So in actuality this pump is operating at 7 horsepower instead of 8 because it's pushing it up. So you're losing efficiency. So we take what's coming out, which is 7 horsepower, divided by what was the input, 8 horsepower, times 100, and this pump is 88% efficient. So again, it's a pretty fairly simple problem, just a new formula that you have to memorize. Uh, it's not a doozy of a formula, but uh, shouldn't give you too much trouble. Um, and if it does give you trouble, go ahead and email me. So that'll do it for this portion. Um, I have tips for test day, just like always. Do the math last, as it tends to be more time consuming, um, especially on the three, because you're going to have essays now, and multiple choice, and true false, and math questions, so there's a lot more to it. And uh, people still struggle with the math more than anything. So do it last, um, so that you don't fry your brains, and uh, just stay calm, be cool, relax. Um, on the grade three, they give you eight possible math questions, but they tell you only do seven. You don't get extra credit if you do eight, and they're not going to correct all eight. So if you do all eight of them, they only correct the first seven that, that you do. And even if you missed one, they're not going to correct that eighth problem. So don't even bother doing it. Just do seven. Choose the seven that you know you can do or that you think you can do. If you get stuck on a question, move on and come back to it later. Don't spend too much time on a question because uh, you can stall and spend 10 minutes on a multiple choice question and that's way too long. Uh, even if you don't know the answer to a math question, try to do as much of you as you can so that you can get partial credit. All math questions must be supported by calculations. You can't just give an answer and uh, expect them to give you full credit if you get it right with, if you didn't show how you got that answer. Uh, take your time. You're given three and a half hours to complete the exam, uh, which is plenty of time if you go in there um, and study very hard. Uh, if you have questions, comments, or concerns, you can email me at californiawastewater at yahoo.com. I'll try to respond as quickly as I can and to the best of my ability. Please subscribe to my channel, and I wish you good luck on your grade three exam. And thank you for watching my video.